Hello, using your bestest logic and reasoning, what would the universe be like if consciousness was simply memory and memory was simply the actual events that occurred around us? Why, why, why do people think that memories need to be stored anywhere in a block universe? We know, we've known for over 100 years that the universe is simultaneous. Captain Kirk and Spock have access to all your memories. Captain Kirk and Spock can go on the USS Enterprise, they can zip around the sun, they can go back and they can film your first kiss from every angle. And we and the speed of light isn't a, isn't something that that it's surpassable now. The Nobel Prize in 2022 was entanglement, which can go way faster than the speed of light. So we know that there's that we know that the possibility for faster than light communication exists especially if we're all connected in what must be an entangled way. So <clears throat> memory is external from the body. Now, if memory is external from the body, and that's a logical and reasonable thing to think, because we assume that memory must be in the brain, because we assume a separateness like a dreaming doggy will feel like he's separate from the squirrel he's chasing in his dream. But in actuality, it's more like, the squirrel in his dream is more real. Everything is conscious. There's, it's, it, atheism is a silly argument. Richard Dawkins has got, this is the argument that anyone can use to defeat Richard Dawkins in an argument because you cannot prove from self-pinching alone or the word of your mommy that you're actual, that you're not living a dream. You're living... You're, okay, I'm not talking about solipsism when I say a dream. I'm saying because our memories are external from the mind is actual first kisses and actual events. Uh, you're, if you think of your graduation or you remember learning every word in this sentence, it's concurrent to exactly now. And there's physical points in the block universe that you can go to and film from every angle with Captain Kirk and Spock using the USS Enterprise or a 1981 DeLorean. Now, these are physical points in time that actually exist. We know this because if you expand the Einstein twin paradox, where one twin goes off into space at close to the speeds of light for 10 years and returns after his 10 years and finds that his twin had aged 60 years in that time. So, <clears throat> both their nows were simultaneous. But when you expand that into a block universe, and you've got, and everyone that's traveling or doing any kind of motion is in a different sort of timeline, experiential timeline of their own. But time is ultimately an illusion. And you can access this by going faster than the speed of light, which is easily done through the, the 2022 Nobel Prize in Theorem, which proves the universe isn't locally real. It's simpler. It's a simpler explanation for reality that memories don't even need to exist. These these neuroscientists are like saying, "Oh, there's memories in the brain somewhere. We can't find it. We just can't find it. It's in there. We know it's in there, but we can't find it." Because they're just nuts. Academics are like, "Oh, we must be real. Look, I, I'm different than him, and he's different than them, but we're still we're because we're. I'm not okay." I don't want to say a dream because if I say dream, everyone will think solipsism or whatever. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying that our memories are external. So it's more likely that we're all one. And what we are is we're personifications all the way down. Like there's be a group ketchup bottle consciousness. Okay, you can't, th you, okay, you're not even up to the, if you're atheist and watching this, then you're not even at the level to understand what I just said because you need to understand that if you don't need a brain to have a consciousness, then then why would anything need a brain to have consciousness? So your toys, your toaster, void of brain, is aware, memory equals consciousness, that is simultaneously at the factory being made. It doesn't need some sort of brain engram or even a brain to have consciousness. Consciousness is in everything to a certain degree, and they're like in basically groups. We've, but it's consciousness is simple. It's all very, very simple. 
that we've known for over 100 years that time is an illusion. That's crazy. Every memory that makes you you is simultaneous to a billion and one years from tomorrow. And if you evolved into your most highest self, your most highest godly self ever, your highest possible resonance, simultaneously to now, then you personally evolved into God yesterday, but with hindsight in 2020. You are the God of your religion or lack thereof. You are the God that you pray to or don't pray to. This is a mental universe. This life, there's no difference between nocturnal dream toast and toast that you'll eat in what you deem a kitchen. There's none. Pay attention if you're atheist because what I'm saying can be proven because you can prove that you're living inside of a dream. You can't just prove that you're not living inside a dream. You can't just say, oh, my mommy told me I'm a real boy. You can't just like watch Richard Dawkins go on, oh, I'm, just, I'm so real, look, I'm so real. I'm real, I'm real. My mommy said so. That's their only argument. And I, <clears throat> having, ex having an external, in a nocturnal dream at night, you could watch a dragon fly by in your nocturnal dream and you'd be like, oh, it's a dragon. And you'd accept that as normal. But we don't accept that sort of thing as normal in, in our sort of shared dream. Because our memories are external and our consciousnesses are external, then that makes our what we deem reality, what we assume is reality, what idiots assume is reality. This is the illusion is that life is basically more a dream. If more of us could expect to see dragons fly by, then that would occur. But because everyone has their own, this is a dream. So everything that, that's why manifesting and everything works. It's all scripted by the imaginations. We live in a giant imagination and that makes everything that you previously thought possible Probable. If you thought aliens and stuff were, were possible, now they become probable. If we're in a mental universe, because what kind of cheap-ass giant imagination would we be living in if we didn't have aliens or we couldn't teleport stuff from planet to planet someday? <clears throat> and retrocausality is a thing, too. That's how evolution... Evolution isn't... Charles Darwin has got it all wrong. Aristotle had it right with teleology. Because you could say... The universe was created because a cat expects a bowl of milk. Because what we are now and what we expect now sort of creates everything that preceded us in the entire universe to reach this now of our expectations combined, all of us, everywhere. It's a mental universe. It's a giant dream. And if you think of it as such, it's logical and reasonable and easy to understand for a child. Now, the academic view and the current view on consciousness is that consciousness is somehow brain-related. They're looking for it. They've got Sir Roger Penrose going, I think it's hiding in entanglement inside of a microtubule somewhere inside a cell. All cells have microtubules. Why don't they all have? Maybe they all have. Oh, my goodness. No. <laughs> the brain is an antenna at best. So, like, you chop it up or whatever, you're not going to have memories. You're, but your memories aren't stored there. They're the actual events. You're just tuning in to your actual first kisses, your actual proms, everything. And if the word, if, if a toaster is conscious, if a toaster could be conscious because it, it a toaster void of brain is aware memory because conscious that is simultaneous at the factory. If a toaster can be aware, has a, has a consciousness, then what about the word toaster? Can the word toaster have a consciousness? What about every word in this sentence? A group of ketchup bottles on a ketchup on a grocery shop shelf, they would all sort of have the same sort of resonance. They would all have the empty, vacant minds of ketchup bottles at that resonance. But thoughts themselves are conscious. Every word in the sentence has a consciousness. So it's all easy to understand. The thoughts petition our brains. And they're separate. And it sort of gets rid of Freud and whole... <sighs> memories. <sighs> Everything is conscious. So the, the, the thoughts that petition 
the ketchup bottles will all be similar. But if you grab one of those ketchup bottles and you draw a mustache on it and you call him Fred and you're like, hey Fred, how you doing? And you treat that ketchup bottle like a doll, then you open it up, you personify it and you open it up to new thought forms and you change its resonance. And now it's going to get more thought forms like what a doll would get. And you're building that soul, birth of a linear time soul, because we're in a very rigid expectancy universe. Expectations cause, expectations, faith runs the caboodle, cause quantum collapse even into the perceived past. Perceived past. The retro causality is really big. Like, it, it, particle physics is based on it. Like, a positron is just an electron going back in time. There is no, there is no, and there is no kaboom when when electrons and positrons. The annihilation doesn't happen. It's just an electron until it gets to that point, and then it goes back in time as a positron. Wheeler, Feynman. Wheeler posited a whole one electron universe. Um, that might that's even a possibility which I buy more into the um, I'm not going to talk about that. this is about atheism and stuff like that <clears throat> however it is logical and reasonable to think that memory isn't necessary and to think that we've invented it's okay this is the argument of academics today. They say that we're looking at license plate number and then it goes into our eyes and then it goes into our brain and then it translates into some mysterious language that we don't know and then stores that license plate number in like some places or numerous places or in a holographic inner process or something that's occurring within the brain. And then it's stored there, and then whenever we want it, we can just instantly access it, and it all comes back and retranslates and comes back and forms a like a visual screen on our <sighs> hippocampus or whatever. Inside where we can't see or whatever. But the hippocampus is an antenna at best. That's all it is. It's just, there's no, so... An atheist would have to at least admit that that my argument that my theory of everything has merit based on the fact that they can't prove that they're real from self pinching or a note from their mom. Like anybody that argues they could attach a note from their mom and I'll accept that as evidence that you're not living the dream like the rest of us, but the rest of us are living in a common dream. And that's not slipsism. Slipsism is not the same thing. I'm talking about, it's more like a common dream. So it's like, okay, it's more like a, a another way to look at it is like a video game. It's like an, it's like an open world video game and you log on and you play your, you play your character. And then when your character expires then then you have to put the controller down or a similar we can't be in a simulation like we can't be in a, a simu, like a computer simulation because what we are is we're in a simultaneous thing and you can't create a simultaneous simulation from without so whatever we're in we had to have grown organically from within and that's essentially what we've done. We've created a simultaneous simulation where we've grown from within in a logical, mental manner. And what we are is literary personifications. Like we personify that ketchup bottle away from the group ketchup bottle consciousness. And we're seeing every license plate number simultaneous to now. We're just seeing every license plate number simultaneously to forever. So we just have the ability to tune in to when we're seeing it. And that will always be part of our resonance, our linear time resonance. So you do have, and so if you're in, even if you're in like what we perceive of, conceive of as a dream type format, as opposed to the video game, then death would be waking up. So you wake up to somewhere else because you're, 
body here, but we control this physical body. It's it, but it can. It's we're abusing it and stuff like that. We're they're they're mental creations, and we run them on expectations, and we expect bad things to happen to each other and stuff like that. Worry is the only cause of evil in the mental universe. We blame the drunk drivers, but it's the worrying grandmothers that sit there and visualize their grandkids lying in the ditch every time they're 10 minutes late for supper. It's not the drunk drivers at all. And if I say that, the grandmothers will get upset with me, but it's worry. Visualizing bad crap with emotion is manifesting bad crap 101. And daydreaming is the opposite, because this universe is mental. There is ways to learn what I'm saying is truth. Atheists are so, so, so far off. And what I've said in this, everything I've said so far, as I've not used any religious dogma to explain why dying is safe and why you, you would uh, wake up somewhere else and you could be born again, live this life again, or live again if you chose, because time is ultimately an illusion. And Captain Kirk and Spock have access to all your memories. All you need is a 1981 DeLorean, your type mind, and that explains everything in a very reasonable and logical way. It's actually simpler than thinking that we need to... The idea that we're viewing every license plate number simultaneously to now, which concurs with Albert Einstein's 1905 theory of special relativity... If we, if we accept Einstein as his word that time is simultaneous, because you expand the twin paradox into logical parameters, you get the block universe. And Captain Kirk and Spock can really go back. They have to travel faster than the speed of light, but they can go back and see any memory. That's the only, that's the only, per, that's the only barrier that we have ourselves of going backwards in time is surpassing the speed of light, getting our physical bodies past the speed of light to go back in time. But we are entangled already with things that are, are timeless. Electrons and positrons seem to have no place in time, really. Like they're photons, a photon a photon, we know a photon takes eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth. But for the photon, according to known physics, the photon would feel that journey is instantaneous. It would just, it would be like, oh, I'm there. <laughs> I'm at earth. I'm at the sun. I'm at earth. Instantaneously. So we're, we're experiencing this slow downness of everything. And that's that's our uh, Walter Russell type universe. And I wasn't. I don't want to talk about Walter Russell. <clears throat> However, there is. I've been talking for eighteen minutes, nineteen minutes, and I've explained the entire universe basically. Because if you understand that everything has a consciousness, from your toaster on down, even to a dot. Like a dot had consciousness and then it formed a line which could notice the dot and then formed a triangle which could notice the line and everywhere it needs the appreciation. It needs the appreciation. It needs the love to grow. It needs the appreciation to grow into anything or else it won't. So... It's like even from the very first, it had to, there had to be a caring enough to notice that the water had to care to notice the fire. The emotion had to notice the care to, to see the light. And water light later created earth air as secondary elements. And the platonic solids have everything. Once you can you can build empires. Atheism. Okay, so now if you've watched this for twenty minutes, what's your argument for atheism? Your mommy told you that you're real. You assume so. 
Manifest stuff and pay attention. Manifest stuff and pay attention. Repetition is the most obvious hack to focus. Repetition is the most obvious hack to focus. Think of stuff and pay attention. Think of stuff and pay attention. Energy follows out thoughts. I'm Wayne Hilborn. Use logic and reasoning. Don't pay attention to the academics that say they're real. Because a dreaming dog thinks that his dreaming brain doggy brain is real too. And that it holds valid memory. But if you're in a dream then memory is not part of the scenario at all. And I'm not talking about solipsism because solipsism is like a solo theory where you just wake up and everybody was a dream character or whatever. But no, we're in a video game. However you want to describe it, memory and consciousness is external from the brain. Brain is redundant. Brain memory is de facto redundant in an Einstein block universe. Brain memory is redundant in an Einstein block universe. True or false? Brain memory is redundant in an Einstein block universe. If we can access all those memories using the USS Enterprise or 1981 DeLorean. Because if you go to those places, you can actually relive those things. You can save the humpback whales. I think we have like 100,000 or so. But you can... Whatever. I don't know. Back to the future. Blessed be. I'm Wayne Hilborn. This is why Richard Dawkins is a dumbass. Or, sorry, I'm smart. He says that teaching religion is child abuse. And I teach that teaching atheism, or that child is real is child abuse. I've actually said that in my books so that it's child abuse because you're immortals. Dying is safe. It's like waking up. Grow up. It's like safe. Like time to go, it's time to go. That's it. My God, it's no such drama. You live forever. You're immortal changeling. It's like grow up. Remember what you are, who you are crazy atheism is crazy and it's for people that are very 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 first time humans or very low intelligence I think because you have to be really really unsmart to be atheist